Hey YouTube land, this is Phil Choney with Guns, Games, and Racing, and I got another thing for you today. I had previously told you guys in a separate video that I was having trouble with all of my batteries. So what I've done is I took them out, filled them all up with water, I let them sit for about a week. After I let them sit for a week, I put a huge amp charge on them and for about 24 hours I put the batteries outside charged them up for 24 hours and they came back I was pretty surprised not all of them came back one of them was still uh, has a dead cell it's not going to come back but five four of them came back from dead I mean I was happy to see that I still don't like the messiness of the lead acid battery but it's okay and today I wanted to tell you about the battery connectors that I had before I, I took all the battery connectors out and I switched them all over to this much thicker wire except for one which has a broken terminal but I like this thicker wire here and you can you can see my thumb in perspective of it it's a lot better I like it a lot better so I put these batteries back after I put a real heavy charge on them with an external charger I filled them up with water and man it worked amazing I, I'm getting a lot better performance out of the bank than I was for at least four months you know it's been acting up for a long time and I'm glad that it's not a problem right now but in the future I still am going to get AGM batteries just so I don't have to deal with the mess and they're maintenance free I don't want to have to deal with making maintenance every so often taking them outside washing the whole bank putting baking soda everywhere cleaning the mess of the sulfuric acid so what I'm going to do is just get AGM batteries for the next solar bank that's going to run off of the 24 volt inverter that's a 6000 watt 18,000 surge inverter uh, once I get that uh, system put together I'm going to be pretty happy with it I think I'm going to be really really happy with it but for right now I'm going to show you what I've been doing so far let me focus this so basically I've been writing down a data sheet I've got two different solar systems that's charging the same bank the left one here is the Harbor Freight one the right one is the Ames Corporation one and you can see the amps on the Harbor Freight one doesn't go very high I think it's 2.7 amps is the highest I've gotten in four days of you know checking it but you know they're just not a very good set of panels they, they're, they're garbage I don't recommend getting them and with the other one um, I got uh, 12.9, 13.6, 6.7. You know, even on these cloudy days, I'm getting good power out of the other system than the Harbor Freight system. So I can tell you, if you want to do solar panels, it's not a good idea to go and get Harbor Freight panels. Harbor Freight panels would be for something that is complete backup you cannot use nothing on it it's only going to charge it and keep it maintain charge but if you want to use something all the time like I use my Renai heater on this system it doesn't use but just you know 40 or 50 watts when it's operating it uses about 10 watts when it's not operating which is great and that doesn't use hardly any electricity also, I've got a uh, ultraviolet light that's in my ductwork. It uses 
50 watts continuously. It never shuts off and it runs all night, all day. And I use that, you know, for health reasons that I have to have it. Uh, and if I can reduce my electric bill, I plug that thing in, I save a few dollars a month. You know, it's it's great. I'm saving about four or five bucks with this a month, which is, you people say, oh, it's only four or five dollars. Well, I've only got, right now, at the most that I've calculated, I'm getting 300 watts out of the system at the most. Um, and that's both systems, both panels, both charge controllers, basically, it's both of them. And if you haven't seen the bank before here, you know, there's the inverter, there's some fuses. You know, I actually got a four watt clock running off of it, which is, it's nice to have it. Uh, also, I'll go ahead and show you this. I've also got uh, these right here. Okay, they show the right side is the Ames panel, the left side is the Harbor Freight panel. So you can see I'm running 2.2 .2 amps at 0 0.8 uh, amps on the left one. You know, it's cloudy outside. It's, you know, overcast. So, I mean, I'm not running a whole bunch of amps. When it's not cloudy, I'll run a lot more. I'll run 13 to 15 amps. Also, I mean, right here I've got my fuses I got eight of those fuses these two fuses are going to be used in the future right here I'm going to hook these up these are the uh, Ames panels I'm going to hook these up to uh, a switch that's going to transfer power whenever this is the the batteries are full fully charged into a grid tie hopefully and then there's my very cheap and expensive pure sine wave inverter. I got a 600 watt on purpose. I could afford a, you know, a larger one, but I didn't need a larger one. I don't want one that's too big because if it's too big, it uses a lot of power just to be on and I don't want to drain my batteries. This system is a small system. I'm aware that it's a small system. And then there's my two charge controllers. And I got a temperature gauge right here. It's about 68 degrees inside. You know, and here's a power strip. This runs my clock. Also got some uh, battery chargers. So there's my camera charger right there. Then I got my power tool charger. All my power from my power tools run directly off of sunlight. And it is awesome just to know that I'm carrying sunlight every time I'm using my power tools. Uh, this here's my other charge controller for the Ames panel. It's a nice one, and this one it's a nice one too. There there is a problem with these sometimes. Uh, I've noticed that the other day this one was running zero amps, and this one was running 14 amps. So I disconnected power from the solar panels, turned it back on, and it started working properly again. But that's a warning. Um, these are cheap controllers. They work good for cheap controllers. They are an MPPT tracking controller that works exactly as specified, but they're cheap. So they're not going to be the most reliable controllers that you can purchase what you want to get is probably something that is more expensive and also everybody wants to get a really good amount of power taken out of their electric bill and that's what is intended on it but the biggest thing for me was I want to help the environment if I'm going to be living the lifestyle like I do today in a house in the city I want to get some of that electricity away from CO2 emissions and help the planet I just it's cheaper in the long term to buy solar panels and large equipment but if you buy it all out it's thirty thousand dollars from somebody that doesn't know how to install it this system right here I was 
I bought the Harbor Freight panels from my mom for like a hundred bucks. She gave me four batteries. A couple of them don't work no more. I've got to, went ahead and replaced those. And then, you know, they just, you know, these AutoZone and auto, Advanced Auto Part batteries, they keep failing. Not very good. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, go forward with the AGM batteries with the next system. It's going to be a 24 volt system. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get it with my income tax. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put it up myself. And, uh, there's a kit that I'm going to buy. Uh, I'll leave the link for it below after I buy this uh, kit itself. I'll go ahead and show you what I purchased. And I'll tell you what I had to add to it to make it work. Um, the power for the solar panels comes through this gray pot and it runs directly outside so and you can see i got a camera right there and i got some more cameras run other places and wires dangling every which way i'm gonna have to fix this stuff up a little better than what it is and i mean you can see this is a there's a copper line right there that runs to my humidifier. It's broken now. I got to fix it. Thumbs up if you guys like the video. And let me know what else you would like to see in the comment section below. Subscribe for more solar panel do-it-yourself stuff. And I want to say thank you for watching. It's been uh, my pleasure. Stay solar.